Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog. Let's talk about Dirty John, the series that has been on Bravo Network. Today is Sunday, January the 20th, 2019. Now, I just had a lovely Sunday breakfast with my partner, Nicole, at a restaurant where we were talking about the first three episodes. I haven't seen the whole show, just the first three episodes of the Dirty John series. Her and I see it differently. What I want to do, and I'm sure this is not going to be the last video I do on Dirty John, what I want to do is just talk about the facts that are presented as well as the differing points of view and get your thoughts on what I'm discussing. Right? Because I believe there's a greater diversity of views out there than the public's aware of. So let's go through it. Right? And again, I've only seen the first three episodes. I understand they have gone through the entire season. I did listen to the podcast. My partner has actually been reading the articles that spawned the podcast. Um, so we've been discussing some of the background facts. Now, you know the narrative, right? There is a woman, what I'm going to do to protect privacy here, even though her name is all over the internet, is I'm going to refer to the actress who plays her on the Bravo series, right? Connie Britton. That's who will name the main character here. You understand Connie's an actress who's portraying the real character, the person who exists in real life. So let's say Connie Britton is a very successful business owner, very successful in Orange County, California. Now, full disclosure, in the early 90s, years ago, when I had more hair than this, <laughs> And I wasn't choked up like this, and I didn't have all this gray. Years ago, in the early 90s, I lived in Newport Beach for a few years. I knew the lay of the land then a little bit, right? Very affluent area. Very affluent area. A little provincial. People in certain social circles know each other. Right? So, you have Connie Britton. She is a very successful business owner. She owns and operates an interior design business. Right? She is engaged in online dating. She meets a doctor online. Right? Dirty John. John Meehan. She meets a doctor. He has a first date with her that he leaves a bit abruptly. But he's good looking. They clicked at the restaurant on that first date. She feels physically attracted to him, right? He is conversational. They talk about their lives. They talk about their dreams. She views him as chivalrous. Now, he leaves the first date abruptly, but she gives him a chance, and he shows up on the second date better behaved, right? And the chemistry is still there. Now, understand, Connie herself has a bit of a history. She's been married four times already, right? So now she's at the point in her life where she wants to enjoy herself. Her kids are pretty much out of the house, right? Um, they're older. Um, one has kids and is in a relationship of his own. Uh, another lives in Las Vegas and she's in a relationship, right? Her other daughter is in Orange County, but she has her own life, collects handbags, things like that, 
right? All of the kids strike me as aware and savvy. So, almost instantaneously, right, her kids start doubting her new boyfriend, who she meets, let's get the timeline right, in October of 2014. That's when she meets him. Let's pay close attention to that timeline, right? The kids almost immediately start doubting John. John's wearing hospital scrubs wherever he goes. Worse yet, the hospital scrubs aren't that clean, right? The kids start to doubt the story on whether John, in fact, is an anesthesiologist, right? The doctor he claims he is. In fact, mom's even in therapy with one of the kids, right? Talking about their mother-daughter issues. And of course, the daughter is concerned about what she believes is the new boyfriend's lack of authenticity, right? This is how they portray it on the show. So we then find out that in November of 2014, I'm not kidding, one month later, right, one month later, Connie Britton decides to move in with John. <clears throat> and of course, they're not renting an apartment together. No, 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 folks. When I say they move in together, right, they're moving in together to a house that's right on the water. Right, it looks like it's on Balboa Island. Just, you know, looking at the TV show, they don't give the address, but let's say you know off the top that the house they're renting is very expensive, right? This is, after all, Southern California. You're talking about a house where when you're out on the deck, you're looking at the water, right? So, Connie Britton, one month in, moves in with the guy, right, one month in. The kids are upset. Two months in, in December of 2014, the two of them go to Vegas, and believe it or not, they tie the knot. Well, of course, now we're at the part of the show where Connie is finding out that she doesn't quite know who she married. Right? We're finding out that he's not quite a doctor. He's actually a nurse. Right? We're finding out that the person paying for the house that they rented on the water is Connie. Because the doctor, who now we understand isn't a doctor, he's a nurse, the doctor really can't financially contribute. Right? He also is a guy who somehow is in Orange County, California, and doesn't have a car. Connie is lending him her Maserati to drive around town. Right? He's not only living in the house she's paying for, he's driving the car she's paid for. As you can imagine, this isn't going over well with the kids in the slightest. There's also a scene where Connie, um, while she's dating him, before they move in together, says, hey, I need to go to this charity benefit event. Right? Meet me there. And of course, this is Newport Beach. You can imagine someone says to you, let's go to a charity benefit. How would you dress to show up? Well, John shows up, of course, wearing hospital scrubs. Right? Connie's in a gorgeous dress. You can imagine this is a tuxedo type charity event. Right? They're trying to raise money for a good cause. And this guy shows up dressed like he is always dressed. 
right? Wearing hospital scrubs. You could tell at least his kids can. Not his kids, her kids. At least her kids can tell. Now this is a guy who is wearing a costume, right? He puts on hospital scrubs when he wants to come across as someone who is in the medical profession, right? When he wants to come across as a doctor, right? But what's painfully apparent is that this guy not only isn't a doctor, right? This guy's completely unfamiliar with the social environment of a charity fundraiser, right? So here's where you have a split in my family. <clears throat> my partner feels that Connie Britton is fooled here. That she meets a guy, she believes the online profile. Right? She believes the guy was a doctor. She trusts the guy. Fully. Believes what she's told. Then, of course, learns the hard way over time that John is actually a guy with secrets. That John isn't John. John is dirty John. Right? She, after four marriages, is vulnerable. And, of course, this guy exploits her vulnerability. Exploits her social isolation. In other words, you can be socially isolated while being a successful business owner, right, interfacing with clients who are predominantly married, who you can't confide in about the people you're dating, right? You're overlooking the red lights. You don't even know where they are because you don't have any peers to discuss your dating life with, right? John's inability to contribute to the rental by the Pacific Ocean, well, that could be a liquidity problem, right? California's expensive as it is. Maybe John has his money tied up in investments or has his money tied up elsewhere, right? The fact that she is trusting leads her to marry this guy two months after meeting him, right? Something she wouldn't do if she thought he was less than completely honest. The fact that the kids don't like him might be a sign that the kids have seen her go through some tough relationships in the past, right? Four marriages. And the kids might not want her to rush into anything too fast where she might get hurt. Right? Evidence of her trust of John is the fact that she immediately integrates him into her social circle. On the series, the two of them are seen going to church, her church. Right? John quickly meets the kids. John meets Connie Britton's mother. Right? Clearly, Connie has gone into this believing this guy. And then finding out that what he's told her isn't completely accurate. Now, that's my partner Nicole's take. My take's a little bit different. I want to know if there are people like me out there. Right? You're dating online. You're a woman who is in a profession where you have to be aware, right? Interior design. You have to be spending your time thinking about what other people think when they enter a room. Their expectations, things like that. You have to be thinking about how other people have designed the rooms in their house, right? Because you, of course, are being hired. <laughs> to make this house special. This house special versus other houses. 
right? Keep track of the timeline too. We're talking about 2014. On the show, you actually see Connie after John insists on having a security system installed in the house, right? We're left to speculate on whether that was intended to spy on Connie when she's home, keep track of what she's doing in the house. You know how these controlling personalities are. But what's important to me is that on the show, she then learns how to look at the security system herself using her cell phone. Right, folks? 2014 wasn't that long ago. My theory is different than Nicole's. I believe this woman is at a point in her life where she wants fun. Right? She wants a guy, she has a fantasy, a desire, a goal. At this stage, right, she's socially established. At this stage, she wants a guy who she's physically attracted to. A guy who's going to make her laugh. He doesn't have to go to Harvard. He doesn't have to have an MBA. She just has to be physically attracted to him. He has to excite her. She wants to have fun, right? Go out, have that extra drink, right? Stay in bed that extra hour. Just have fun, right? Put another way, she wants not quite a boy toy, she wants a man toy, right? Someone her age who she can get into. So, she meets this guy on the first date. Now, if she's doing online dating and she's about to meet someone, doesn't that already presuppose that she has some proficiency online. You're about to meet someone. Don't you, if the person says, you know, I'm a doctor, don't you go online and look up the hospital and find out which doctors have privileges at that hospital? Don't you find a way to see if this guy has a medical degree? Don't you do some basic research online, right? After the first date, first date ends poorly. We'll just put it that way. First date ends poorly. She decides to go on a second date. Well, after she's heard his spiel on the first date, wouldn't you expect her to go online and to find out if she can verify at least some of the facts of what he's saying? My operating theory here, very different than Nicole's, my operating theory is that this woman wasn't that fooled. I believe Connie has a first date and she knows a couple of things. She's attracted to this guy. Right? This guy, in the parlance, he smells good. She can have fun with this guy. After building a successful business, after raising kids who seem well-adjusted, after four marriages, isn't it time for her to have fun? So if this guy has a story that's interesting, <clears throat> know some medical terms. But if you're looking at the guy and you understand, you know what, this guy isn't a doctor. Right? Parts of his story don't match up. I can't verify parts of his story online. Him wearing scrubs everywhere, that's not something doctors would do. Can we, can we reach the point where we at least speculate on whether or not she has actually been around other doctors? 
folks, she's a very successful interior designer. At one point in the show, she talks about having some emergency money around the house. When he says, how much? She says, oh, eighty dollars to $90,000 in cash. That's the kind of lettuce we're talking about here. Right? So I'm guessing, especially since she's going to charity fundraisers, I'm guessing Connie has already been around doctors. I'm guessing Connie is sensing, since this guy is a stranger, that there is a possibility that his story is not 100% truthful. But I believe she's willing to take the risk. Knowing that part of the guy's story isn't truthful. In other words, you show up on a date, <clears throat> person looks really attractive to you, right? You're looking for fun. Person has some tall tale, but you can sense that the person also has some exposure to the profession. Right? Forgive me. But isn't there a possibility here that while Connie doesn't quite know that John has a drug problem, that John has had problems with the law, that John has multiple restraining orders out against him from different women, that John has kids from a prior relationship that he's not even disclosing. Isn't there a possibility that she, Connie, shows up for the first and second date, figures out that this guy isn't quite authentic, but also reaches the conclusion and decision that she's just going to have fun with this guy She's just going to have an adventure. It's about time in her life that she has an adventure for at least the next few months. On the show, Connie Britton looks like a deer caught in headlights. Right? She meets a guy. The guy's lying. She's trusting. She doesn't know what's going on. Maybe the truth is more nuanced. She meets a guy. The guy's lying. She knows the guy's lying about some key things, but the guy's physically attractive. They click in bed. The guy's easy on the eyes. The guy makes her laugh. Let's fool around. Let's see how long the magic lasts. Right? Think about it. You meet a guy, he's a doctor. You're then going to move in together quickly. And he tells you, you know, what a shame. I can't contribute. <laughs> At that stage, do the red flags go off? At that stage, do you take a step back and say, you know what? Let's wait until you can contribute. Or do you decide, you know what? I'm going to foot the entire bill. I believe people looking for boy toys or man toys might foot the entire bill. They might be thinking, wow, this is going to be great sex for as long as it lasts. Since I'm into this guy, since I've been married before and I've had some relationships fizzle, let me just hang with this guy and let's make the most of it before the light goes out on the candle. So I'm going to get the place down by the water, but I'm not going to buy the place. It'll be a one-year rental. Right? One-year rental. On the show, Connie is savvy enough to offer the landlord's representative money up front. Cash. Now, if she's that shrewd in negotiating that deal, don't you think she's shrewd in negotiating 
the terms of her new relationship. So, as you can imagine, the kids don't like the idea of mom suddenly with some Lothario guy, right, whose background doesn't add up to them. Now, are the kids that savvy? Or is this an open secret, the fact that his background doesn't add up? I know Connie is playing the role of, oh, he's a doctor, and, you know, then later it's, oh, he's a nurse with anesthesiologist training. Okay, fine, right? She starts moving her judgment a little bit. She realizes that not everything he said was okay, but she's willing to overlook some things. My partner, Nicole, believes she's not overlooking much. She hasn't agreed to overlook much. Folks, I'm on the other side of the street. Right? She's overlooking a lot here intentionally. Right? Isn't this casual dating online? Now, I agree. She makes a big mistake. And it's a big mistake. Right? She marries the guy, guess what? In December of 2014. They go to Vegas and they get married. Right? That's a big mistake. But how savvy is she? Folks, she's been divorced multiple times before. You want to know the people who know their private property rights, their community property rights, what separate property is? It's the people who have been divorced before. Isn't it? She knows... Look, as long as this guy and I don't buy real property together, right? As long as I keep my business separate, as long as we're not together that long, then he won't have a claim on my assets, right? He wants to get married. Who exactly is Connie Britton? Is she the woman who's in love with the guy who says, okay, then let's get married for the rest of our lives? Or is she the four-time divorcee who says, okay, he wants to get married. I'm really enjoying the physical part of our relationship. I'm really enjoying this adventure, this short-term adventure. Let me go ahead and get married with him for a few months and then we'll revisit it and see if I still want to stay married to him, right? We have a lease on this house we're staying in. We don't own property together. There's nothing to unwind. Let's go even further. You know what Connie does with the $90,000 that she's keeping around the house? She allows him to talk her into putting the money in a safe deposit box at the bank that he has access to. So later she goes to the safe deposit box. Shocker. The money's no longer there. She stays with the guy. Now what exactly is that? Is that the guy stealing her money? Or is that her saying, okay, for our adventure here, right? This is the spending money you're going to have, right? $90,000 if we break up, that's your go away money. Is this the move of a wife thinking long term or is this... Just consider the possibility. A move made by a sugar mama. Just food for thought. Now don't get me wrong. Dirty John, awful individual. He's the villain in the scene. Right? There's no question about it. Connie Britton is the victim. I'm not here saying otherwise. But I don't believe life is black and white. 
right? I don't believe this is clearly a woman who falls in love with a grifter who then falls for his lies and gets betrayed, right? I believe this is a little bit dicier than that. I believe these are two people getting together, I believe early on, especially since, right, in real life she goes out and buys clothes for the guy at Brooks Brothers. This is a woman who understands she's more established than her good-looking paramour. Right? This is a woman who understands that she has to foot the bills for them. Right? Not just his clothes, but the house. Not just the clothes and the house. But she has to let him drive her Maserati. Right? She's talking to the kids. The kids are saying, hey, don't you know he's lying to her, to, to you? Don't you know he's lying? And she's saying, hey, give him a break. Now, is the give him a break because she believes he's a truly outstanding guy who's long-term husband material? Or is it because she knows, hey, if this adventure doesn't work out, I'll get divorced the fifth time. We'll go our separate ways. I'll just tell him. You can keep the $90,000 that we put in the safe deposit box together. Right? He will have already received his payout. We'll move on. As I said, no doubt. She knows. Not to put him on title for either their real estate or her personal property, including her Maserati. Anyway, that's how... Nicole and I see it. We're having the discussion, different point of views, right? In the DeWire household, let's say we don't agree. <laughs> we don't agree a lot of the time, right? And that's, that's fair, right? I could be wrong. She could be wrong. Let me know what you think. Which scenario is this? Now, I'm not saying John's anything other than terrible. I'm not saying Connie Britton isn't victimized. But is this an innocent divorcee who's lied to and who falls for the lies? Or is this a sugar mama who's overlooking the lies because of the physical attraction and the excitement that the man toy brings her? I look forward to your comments. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.